eggy spaghetti back inside the spaghetti lab and today's episode we're going to look at a program called pure data which is free and open source and it lets you program your own sound and video installations and different types of of applications and I like it personally because it's a visual programming environment which means we're going to be dragging around little blocks to make our programs happen and the creator himself Miller Puckett says that he likes this program because you can make art with computers and that was one of his original visions behind creating pure data so I have here with me a Raspberry Pi and if you haven't heard of a Raspberry Pi it is this is a computer on a circuit board and it's quite affordable too. It has a HDMI video output, a bunch of USB ports, internet that goes over an ethernet cable, and a whole bunch of these pins that are similar to what was on the Arduino. And the Raspberry Pi is pretty cool because Pure Data runs on it since Pure Data was open source and was made for a few different operating systems. There's quite a few different programs that we can install on the Raspberry Pi to make digital art projects and overall the ecosystem is quite affordable which I like for when I think about working with students and trying to get a whole school up and running with these projects. I'm always looking for things that are kind of open source and stuff like this and pure data. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look. I'm going to show you how to get the program installed and we're going to make our first patch. So we're going to be cheating a bit today. We're doing this on a Mac and not the Raspberry Pi. This is fine because it's just an overview. And so we go to the URL puredata.info and this is the this is the site which has the downloads and also a community for getting help and that sort of thing and some documentation. So on the downloads there is something called Pure Data Van Vanilla which is the official distribution and is continually being updated. So this is 0 0.481 you can see it exists for Windows, Mac, Linux, and that's great. So the version that I'm running on my computer is called P PD Extended, and that has not been updated in a few years, but it's a good version because it has a lot of extras already installed in it different modules and that sort of thing now I have trouble finding PD extended on the pure data website so I just usually search PD extended in Google and then it takes me to the page um, let's see so there's the warning this is abandoned software there is no support it was released the release is to, from 2013 and there it is windows mac linux and it's this is um yeah so choose the version for your operating system and get that installed and Next, we're going to load up the program. All right, so I'm going to launch mine from Spotlight PD Extended. Okay, so this is the kind of a log, and it shows you what's going on. There's also some audio meters here. What sometimes helps is just making sure the audio settings, if you have a sound card, that would be selected here. In this case it's showing my webcam as one of the sound cards sound cards 
and we can go new to make our first patch and we can put objects and you can note the shortcuts for for what they are and as a new user we don't know what to type in these boxes so we're going to go into the help file and start the help browser manuals and we're going to do the pure data folder audio examples and we'll just do sine wave so there's tons of help files in here that show you all about programming sound and video uh, various installations and applications it's very cool and so the way we're gonna get this started is we need to turn on the DSP and that is just by done by clicking the one here and you can hear the sine wave has started and I'll turn it and it also turned on a green DSP check mark over here okay I thought it would show some levels but it's not that's fine so let's turn that off for a second and quickly explain this OSC object is the sine wave itself which OSC stands for oscillator and then this next one is going to lower the volume to much lower because if it was not lowered that sine wave would be super loud and then this DAC sends it out of the computer okay digital audio converter is what DAC stands for now how would I change the pitch of this well we have to know that in the moment it's in an unedited uneditable state so I'm going to go into edit mode and now I'm able to put things in here and typically you'd be you want to be careful about putting things in the help files because if you overwrite them they are your they kind of get ruined you'd have to find a way to restore the help file so I've just taken the what I found in there I copied it and pasted it into my own patch and let's take that out of edit mode you're going to want to learn that shortcut command E and that locks it so that when I click on things they start to work so there we go it says audio IO error but it's fixed and turn it off so what we can do now is go back into edit mode with command E and I'm going to put in a number and I'm going to drag that number into the oscillator and we're going to try this again and now I'm going to start to click and drag the number so let's see what's happened I'm going to close my help file here we go so it's so low that we can't hear it and now it's coming in it's a bass sound at the moment because it's a hundred 100 Hertz 193 Hertz and you get the picture okay so that was a quick introduction and what you can also do if you're just getting started is to look at some of the other 
audio examples because they go they can be quite extensive uh, ranging from audio effects samplers and that sort of thing and then there's the gem library which is the video add-on and that will show a whole bunch of examples involving um, you know tweaking say a video input or generating original video different video effects as well okay that's it for our introduction to pure data and the next pure data video that we're going to do we're probably going to look at something involving recording sound and playing back sounds because that's a one of the a really fun thing to do with the program and then eventually we're also going to look at how to set up some of those gem video examples okay see you in the next video